Hello everyone, thank you for viewing or tuning in. It's Lanish Renee of LR Consulting. And um, today we're here to talk about a very interesting topic that recently has touched a very close friend of mine and um, the heart of some of uh, the people in the industry that I work with. Uh, myself and Contact Atlanta want to build some awareness on something that is that is extremely common in the United States and it's a kidney transplant. Um, until just recently where a friend that I went to college with uh, reconnected with me um, I've always known that he's been sick and he's had issues, but I didn't know how serious it was until recently. Uh, Michael Williams is a 37-year-old adult male, and um, he's been actually sick since the age of 8, but recently um, he needs a kidney transplant. So we want to build some better awareness and um, give you guys some, some facts and some information. And also, you know, I want his story to touch your heart because he, he does need some extended help. And, you know, I'm hoping that everyone who's connecting um, on the behalf of Contact Atlanta and LR Consulting is um, going to reach out and, and let's let's move forward and help. In 1993 mm -hmm. is when you were diagnosed with kidney failure. Right. Okay. So, and that was the beginning stage. The beginning stage. Right. Okay. And then you were uh, admitted into the Reno Clinic. And mm -hmm. I want, you know, all of the viewers to understand what the Reno Clinic is. Because I was very ignorant to it as well until, you know, uh, Michael explained it to me. So tell the viewers what the Reno Clinic is. The Reno Clinic is a clinic to where when you are first diagnosed or um, you first start having kidney failure. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, what it is, is is basically when you're going through a series of testing. Mm -hmm. um, in my case, there was blood found in my urine. Okay. Um, and my doctors was trying to do everything they can to kind of see why um, were there blood in my urine. And even before that, you had high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, which is um, kidney failure right. is another cause of having high blood pressure. Right. So, for everyone out there, it's very important. So go ahead. Um, after which, um, going through that, I did a series of tests. After days, weeks, and months of testing, they still could not find out. Um, which they still put you on dialysis after that, though, right. right? Okay. Um, which was eventually leading to um, completely kidney failure. Now, dialysis, I also want people to understand what that is um, because I hear it a lot even in the younger generation. There are a lot of people on dialysis. Mm -hmm. So, you let the viewers know also what the dialysis is for. Um, dialysis is pretty much where you go into a clinic. And you're on a machine for anywhere from three to three and a half hours. Mm. Um, and this, what this machine does, it cleans your blood. Mm -hmm. um, it gets rid of all the waste material that's in your body. And there's two forms of dialysis, there's correct? There's two forms of dialysis. Okay. Um, the one that I'm talking about is the one where you go into a clinic. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is um, what we call home dialysis. Mm -hmm. Is actually where you actually do dialysis within your home. Okay. But the only difference with that is there's a tube inserted in your stomach. Ooh. And um, from your stomach, you're connected to the machine and you can run all night long mm -hmm. or you can run, um, instead of doing dialysis during the day, right. you can do it at night. Okay, and versus, just like keep on running. Um, versus going to a clinic okay. doing it. Um, Um, with kidney failure, a lot of it had to do with blood pressure. Um, because we are African American, um, mm -hmm. we find it out that more and more African American are developing high blood pressure than anything.
Are you still on dialysis? You started in 2006, it's now mm -hmm. 2011. Right. I am still on dialysis okay. um, for three and a half hours for three days. Okay. Um, I'm taking treatment um, and, and it's kind of joyful. I'm sure. I'm sure. And, and go into giving people information. Initially, he said that, you know, they found blood in his urine. Mm -hmm. And that was a sign. Mm -hmm. And this was like after he had already had diabetes and right. or high blood pressure. What? High blood pressure, excuse me. Um, so give people some advice on what's the next step if you start seeing blood in your urine. Like, what was your next step? Because that could help someone else. I would advise anyone, if you find blood in your urine or even just start having headaches, mm -hmm. go to your doctor. Get yourself checked out. Um, a, a lot of times we catch headaches and we just want to pop a BC or right. a Tylenol. I am guilty Giddy, of that. <laughs> um, and, and fail to realize that it could be your blood pressure. Right. Um, it's a solid killer. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's nothing that can just be picked up. Right. Um, but I advise anyone, especially males, to make sure that you go to the doctor, get yourself checked out, get a physical. The same thing with high blood pressure, it runs in the family. Um, once you get the transplant, then, you know, what's the next step after that? Um, after the transplant, that's for any dialysis patient. Um, within six months, mm -hmm. um, Social Security, um, pretty much they give you six months. And huh. then after six months, they completely cut you off. Huh. Um, that's huh. also including with Medicaid and Medicare. Um, but the, the thing about it, um, if you have doctor visits mm -hmm. afterwards, Medicaid will pay for those doctor visits. I'm still confused. Um, I'm still completely confused. But they confused. won't pay the full portion. They will only pay half of it. Okay, for something that has, has been so draining and detrimental to your life, mm -hmm. it's normally, it, it will probably take anywhere from three to six months as a recovery time. So you still have to find work. You still have to get used to the new kidney. Right. And then you still need help with the medicine to make right. sure that your body doesn't reject the new kidney. Mm -hmm. Six months. I, I don't understand that. There's a problem here. You know, it's we really need to look past. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that everyone should still continue to donate um, and to help the kidney survivors as well as the, the people who are having kid, kidney failure right now. But, and, and support the nonprofits and the foundations. But at the end of the day, this is still a problem in our community. Because for you to tell them that six months, okay, six months, you need to be back on your feet and you need to be ready because you're not going to get any more money from us. Wow. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I think we really need to do something, contact our governors, contact our congressmen, whatever we need to do because something is wrong with that picture. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not, I have, you know, just high blood pressure. Oh, I need some help. Right. You know, this is a kidney. This is a part of your body that has to function in order for you to function. What is some additional steps that someone can do to see if they qualify to be a kidney donor? Um, to be a donor, first of all, there's only two hospitals here in Atlanta mm -hmm. um, that actually do the kidney transplants okay. um, surgery, and that's Emory. Um, we all heard about Emory, know about Emory. Right. And the other one is Piedmont. Okay. These are the only two hospitals that perform kidney transplants. Um, in order for a person to um, see if they're qualified, number one, Emory has a 1-800 number. Which is down at the screen right now. You guys should be seeing that 1-800 um, that number or 1-866. Right. Yeah, 1-866 number. That's right down at the bottom of the screen. Um, with that number, you will be put in contact with um, a kidney transplant. Right. A person that has um, diabetes mm -hmm. would not be eligible. Right, which um, makes sense. And a person that's anemic or mm -hmm. low blood cell, 
you wouldn't even qualify because you... With this information that he's giving, you know, I just encourage everyone that is watching this video, you know, just please allow this information to touch your heart. If you live a healthy life currently and you don't have some of um, the things that are limiting you from actually calling this 1866 number for Emory at the bottom, you know, I ask that you give someone else the ability to live a healthy life just like you, you know, because it's not something that will go away if we just take a certain amount of medicine. And obviously it's a it's an extreme epidemic that's going on right now. You know, and it's 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 almost it's sad, but we need to really do something. Uh, contactalanda.com and lrconsultingent.com will have links on our websites um, where you can just click on donate for PayPal. It's a secure, you know, way of donating to the Michael Williams Fund. And we're going to continue to do that uh, even after he receives his transplant. Because I know personally, you know, and if you do research, you will see that it still needs more effort after his Again, you know, I want to thank Contact Atlanta for being a part of this with LR Consulting. And we're going to pop up the number for the Emory 1866 um, for you guys to call in and talk to the nurse to see how you can qualify to become, um, you know, a kidney transplant.